YouTube just released a brand new feature that allows you to ABC test your thumbnails. But I will warn you, if you use this feature the wrong way, it's actually going to decrease the reach that you're getting. So by the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly how you can use this feature, how you should be using it the right way, and a few warnings, because if you use it the wrong way, it's going to lead to a decrease in your reach. And if you've been using this feature, you're probably already noticing that that's happening. But if you use it the right way, it could skyrocket the amount of reach that you're getting. Like this creator that I helped use this tool and they were able to get monetized from one post on YouTube simply by using this tool correctly. So when it comes to actually using this tool, it's incredibly simple. Before I show you how to use it correctly, I wanna show you just how to use it in general. So if you click on one of your videos and come down here to the thumbnail, click right here for options and then click test and compare, this is gonna allow you to show up to three different thumbnails. And essentially what you wanna be doing is only testing a few different changes. For example, I'm not gonna create a drastically different thumbnail if I was to test this. Instead, I would maybe try a blue background and a gray background so I could see which one of these backgrounds actually did the best. In addition to that, there are a bunch of different rules. So here's how it works. Essentially, you're going to upload the images that you want to test. And then what YouTube's going to do is see which one of them performs the best. Now, that being said, they don't actually do this based on click-through rate like you think they would. Instead, they do it based off of average view duration. So they're going to show people the thumbnail that gets them to watch the video for the longest period of time, which is kind of weird because A-B testing thumbnails, you would think, would only equate to you trying to get a higher click-through rate. In addition to that, it can take up to two weeks for you to be able to get the report and be able to see the results. And what essentially is going to happen is YouTube is then just going to show everybody that winning thumbnail after you have a winner. Now, if you're smart, you're probably asking yourselves a few questions. So let me ask you something, Rob. So it is going to show people three different thumbnails and two of them are going to be worse off. What does that mean? That 70% of the time or more, the wrong thumbnail is going to be shown to your audience. And this brings up a bunch of different things that we need to discuss. For example, when should you actually be using this feature and who is this feature actually going to be good for? So to answer those questions, I wanna use some common sense. If you are brand new on YouTube, I'm talking you don't have a lot of subscribers, you don't have a lot of views, you should not be using this feature. The reason that you don't wanna use this feature is because literally 70% of the time, you're gonna be showing the wrong thumbnail to people and your thumbnails probably aren't that good anyway. So you should only be creating one thumbnail and only uploading with one thumbnail so that you can actually figure out what thumbnail thumbnails your audience actually wants to see or what thumbnails actually attract the ideal audience for the content that you're creating. Because if you're testing thumbnails, 70% of the time you're showing people the wrong thumbnail, it is going to tank your views, it is going to slow down your growth, and ultimately you're not going to get monetized on YouTube. Now that being said, if you have videos that have been up for a long period of time and they haven't done that well, well these are the types of videos that I would strongly suggest that you begin using this feature on. In fact, I would not use this feature on new uploads. I would only use this feature on videos that have begun to stall out or videos that have gotten a lot of reach before in the past and now you want to revamp them. Let me show you an example. Like if I look at this video right here, you could see the thumbnail says May 2024. And if we come over to the analytics, this video did pretty good. And then this video completely stalled out. Now it's only getting 75 views every 48 hours. But back when it was first uploaded, it was getting like 10,000 views a day. So this might be something that I want to test this feature with. So what I would do is come over to details. I would change this out, test and compare. And maybe I would just try putting 2024. Or maybe I would try putting July 2024 and test and see whether or not this actually has an impact on how many views it ends up getting. And this is gonna allow you to take an old video and make the old video way better. And there's actually another feature that you're probably not aware of on YouTube that could allow you to do this. So if you come down to the analytics right here and come over here, we're gonna see that there are a few different dips in this video. For example, there's a huge dip right here from 70% down to 67%. So this is something I might wanna check out. So if I click on this, this is then going to bring Bring this over here and if I click play it's going to show me exactly what caused that dip and then there's another dip right here from 52 to 49 another dip right here from 39 to 34 and what I could do is actually come in and take those dips out because clearly if there are dips there it's something my audience didn't want to see so if I come over to editor right here I can go up here to trim and cut and I can literally go in and actually cut out those things maybe it was something I said maybe it was something I shown and what you want to do is you want 
want to actually have a notepad, take notes on those things so that you don't do that thing in a YouTube video ever again. And these two features are going to help you get more views on posts that have already been uploaded on YouTube. Please don't use these features in the beginning once a video has been uploaded because all that's going to do is lead to a decrease in your reach because you're going to be testing too many things when the YouTube algorithm hasn't even had time to try to figure out the correct audience for your piece of content. And I actually do have another tip for you when it comes to A-B testing on YouTube. You don't have to be doing all the A-B tests yourself because you can use vidIQ's Chrome extension to see what A-B tests your competitors are running. For example, I'm coming over to one of vidIQ's videos right here. What I can do if I have the Chrome extension, it is going to show me how this video is getting views. And these little changes right here actually shows me when they change thumbnails on this video. So what you're going to be able to do is learn from other people's A-B tests. You could change this too to the first seven days or the first 24 hours. So if we look here, they changed the thumbnail that they were using after 24 hours because the video wasn't doing that well. And what we could see is that the change in thumbnail didn't actually lead to more views. If we look right here, they were at 12,000 views and now they're only at 17,000 views total on this video. So you can start to use this feature on your competitors to see what A-B tests are running. And you can actually get started with vidIQ today if you go to the pinned comment below, it's only $1 for the next 30 days. This is going to help you make better videos on YouTube. And this is actually only one of the tools that they have. Another one that I really love is if you come over to one of your competitors and you reload the page right here, you're going to be able to click right here, view trending videos. And this is going to show you all of the trending videos that they've uploaded. For example, this video right here as a year old still gets 270 views every single hour. The same one with this one, but it's getting 160. The same one with this one, but it's getting 160. The same one with this one, but it's getting 140. And what does that tell me since they're a competitor of mine? It tells me that their most viewed videos were uploaded a long time ago. So I shouldn't be stressing how well my video is doing in the first three hours, the first 30 minutes, even the first three days, because it could literally take months for those videos to start to get pushed out and ultimately to start to get a lot of views. So what are you waiting for? If you want to grow quicker on YouTube, you need to go to the pin comment below and get vidIQ today for just $1 for the next 30 days. And if you're one of those people that thinks you're just going to A-B test your way to success on YouTube, that's not actually how YouTube works because you can only A-B test your thumbnails. You also need to make sure that you're choosing the right topics, you're choosing the right titles, you're choosing the right descriptions, you're choosing the right tags, and you need to do these things right every single time that you upload a piece of content. And if you're not learning from your videos every single time that you upload on YouTube, well, you're honestly just wasting your time because here's the deal. Just having experiences, aka uploading content, doesn't mean anything if you're not learning every single time that you're uploading on YouTube because ultimately that's what's going to allow you to get better over time and allow you to get more views, get more subscribers, and ultimately get monetized on YouTube. And if you're still struggling to grow on YouTube, but you know that you want to take YouTube seriously and you want to get monetized, well, I personally want to help you, which is exactly why you should check out this video right here that explains exactly how I can help you one-on-one -on -one grow quicker on YouTube so that you're going to be able to get more views, get more subscribers, and ultimately get monetized on YouTube. What are you waiting for? I'll see you over there.